The Defense of Slavery by Zach Geller and Joe Hansen. With the cotton boom in the 1790s, southern plantation farmers tried to find justifications for slavery. They found this in the Bible and the Constitution. The Constitution stated that Congress couldn't abolish the slave trade for 20 years. The three-fifths rule determined the representation in the House for each state. Three white people equaled five slaves. Anti-slavery feelings started to develop following the Missouri Crisis and Denmark Vesey's conspiracy. South Carolina's commerce was threatened with anti-slavery ideas, especially those coming to the southern ports by black seamen in the north. John Floyd's address to the Yankee peddlers of the north addressed the issues that anti-slavery had on the southern states, such as that the slave society couldn't handle the feelings of anti-slavery that challenged the master-slave relationship. William Lloyd Garrison's newspaper, The Liberator, showed anti-slavery feelings. The British then abolished, abolished slavery in the West Indies, which led to concerns in the South about the possibility of the Union also abolishing slavery. So South Carolina and other southern states came together to fight for slavery through an organized militia. There was fighting in a Charleston post office in which anti-slavery literature was burned. The states then passed laws not allowing slaves to be literate. Penalty for a revolt was death. The abolitionist policies in the North threatened expansion in the South. James Henry Hammond gave a speech on pro-slavery feelings. Later, George Fitou also argued for pro-slavery. He argued the slaves were the happiest and freest people. Virginia's legislator tried to promote the gradual abolition of slaves, but it failed. This was important because it showed that there was anti-slavery feelings in the South as well as the North. The slave owners in the southern states declined in the percent of population. It went from 36% to 25%. The average slave owner was 10 times richer. Hinston Helper published The Impending Crisis, which was a direct attack on slavery. Overall, the defense of slavery divided the South. It was impossible for cooperation and compromise.